Welcome back to another LMMS tutorial. In this video, we're going to be creating a nice beat, uh, like a drum beat that loops over and over again. And uh, we're going to be using the beat and bass line editor, getting you familiar with that. This is the first steps in composing your own awesome music in LMMS. So to get started, we're going to actually close a few of these windows. This controller rack we don't need. Just go ahead and left click the X in the top right hand corner. The FX mixer we can close as well. We'll just keep open just the song editor for right now. And you'll notice in the song editor, um, we have four different tracks. We have an instrument track of a triple oscillator. We have a sample track, beat and bass line, and automation track. So to make things simple, we're just going to get rid of everything except for the beat and bass line track. So to do that, we come over here to this little cog, click on it with the left mouse button, and then go to remove track. So I'm going to remove uh, these three tracks and leave just the beat and bass line. If you accidentally remove the beat and bass line, we can get it back by just hovering over here and it says add beat slash bass line and we can add that and we can actually add multiple in if we wanted to but right now we're just going to do one so we have one beat and bass line if we hit play we see our playhead advances from left to right nothing's happening every one of these little black squares here is a bar so it has four counts in it we're in four four so if i click here it becomes highlighted and it becomes act active so whatever is highlighted is what will play in the from the drum, the beat that we create. I'll show you what I mean, that'll make more sense in a second here. To make it go away, I'm just gonna hit the scroll wheel button, like the scroll wheel, press down on it, the button, and it'll go away. Okay, to bring up our beat and bass line editor, we can uh, click here, and it'll show. It's also the F6 key on the keyboard, or we can also do it from within the song editor, we can just click on the beat and bass line where it says beat bass line zero, we can left click. And so we see this beat is associated with uh, this beat slash bass line zero is associated with this window over here. So any changes that are made in this window will get will apply to this one track over here. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's hit play. We also have a play button here, but it just plays looping over this little beat that we're making over and over again. It doesn't play the whole song. So if we hit play, this is looping. We can't see anything happening, but it really is looping. See, it's getting reset back to zero every time. So if we click here, it's playing a like a bass drum beat on the first count of every bar, or of this bar repeating over again. So now we have a nice little kind of a bass drum beat. We only have one track in this. We have one track in our song, but we also only have one track in our beat. So if we want to add multiple instruments, like besides just a bass drum, we have to add those in. So I'll hit stop over here. Actually, before we add instruments, let's add this to our song. So right now, if we hit play on our song, still nothing's happening, even though we edited it. And that's because we didn't actually add this to an active uh, box, an active bar on our song. So if we just click here, now this beat will play on this bar of our song. And only that bar. So now it's done, see? If I want to play for two bars, I'll select the second bar. So now it'll play for the second bar, and now it's done. If I want to play for a long time, I can hit the center mouse button and get rid of these. We can just left click, and we can come into the edge and left click and drag. We can actually drag it out so it keeps playing for a very long time throughout different parts of our song. So that's how that works. But again, if, you're, if yours isn't playing and you're wondering why, it might be because it's just not active. You might have no active selection, so it'll play over here, but it won't play here. And also, a problem you could run into if you're trying to get your beat to work and you're not hearing anything or you don't have the option to click in these squares, it might be because your beat and bass line isn't there. So if your song editor is completely empty, you can still bring up your beat and bass line, but nothing's going to happen. You can't click, you can't play, because you don't. even though you have an instrument, you don't have a track in your song for a beat and bass line. So make sure you click this button here, Add Beat Bass Line, if you don't have one. And then again, if we have multiple, if we have one, two, and three, we can toggle between which one we're editing in the beat and bass line editor here. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and remove these ones again. And now we're going to bring in some different instruments. So by default, this kicker is actually an instrument. We can bring in a second one if we go to the instruments over here on the left-hand side, this tab. We can go down to kicker and left click and drag it in. Now we have two kickers, but they're both the same thing. They both sound the same. 
You can change the way it sounds since it's an actual instrument. We can click on it and it brings up this window here and we can change some of the dials and the, uh, the different uh, the way it sounds. But we're not going to do that in this video. We'll cover that in later tutorials. So there's no sense having two of the exact same sounds. So I'll remove this track. The best thing we can do is actually come down here to My Samples. And there's a bunch of different folders and one's called Drums. And it has a bunch of different drum sounds. You can just left click and hold with your left mouse button to sample and see what they sound like. So we need like, maybe we need a good snare drum. We come down here to snares. And we can left click and drag. Once we find the one we want, we can left click and drag it in. And now that sound becomes available in our beat and bass line. And every square we make active for it, it becomes, it will play that sound. So now we have a nice simple, simple little thing going on here. If we want to grab a hi hat, we can do that. Where's our hi hat? Find a good one. Uh, yeah, let's do this. So a nice simple uh, drum thing we got going on here. If we don't like, if this is kind of loud, maybe our hi-hat's overpowering a little bit, we can come here and hover over the volume and scroll wheel down to turn the volume down, or left click, and we can actually lower the volume. So that hi-hat's not so overpowering. And if we want our snare to be super loud, we can make it louder. So we can adjust the volume, and then pan is like what ear you hear it in, the right ear, or the left ear, or speaker. Uh, so yeah, that's how you control volume panning on these different tracks. If you want to listen to just one track at a time and see just what our bass is doing, we can just click up here and hear it as a, on us hear it solo. So we can hear any track we want to uh, solo. I don't love this what I've created here. Let's change it up a little bit, make it kind of cool. Let's get a tom. So now we take our beat and we can stop it. And now anywhere we, since we're on beat baseline zero, we're editing all four of these. Kind of imagine everything within this window is gonna get shrunk down and it'll play every time we click. So if we click here, it'll play here. And then it stops. If we click here, it'll play and it'll have a, a bar of rest in between. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and then really the song editor and the, the beat and bass line editor are very similar in that they each can have multiple tracks. You can drag in, like we could, we wouldn't really want to, but we could drag in a tom as an instrument in our song. Um, but we, we wouldn't really want to do that. But, but, you, but in the next video, we are going to bring in some instruments and we'll learn how to play the piano roll. The, the issue is if we bring in the tom, we have to edit it using the uh, piano roll. So if we go to edit this, we have to actually play different notes. And it'll be the tom will be different pitches, which is kind of cool. Maybe you do want to do that. But um, and then we have a nice little thing here. But that's kind of getting ahead of ourselves. In the next video, we'll look at the piano roll and how to use it. It's kind of similar to the beat and bass line editor as well. So I hope you found this video informative. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe, comment below, and uh, I hope to see you on the next video.